morning, San Bonani. Hey guys, I'm Z and you're watching Versatile, where you can get the ins and outs of everything you need to know about this digital age. And I'm Lumise. So today we're going to take a look at the future of TV. Television has been around for longer than most of us can remember, and I'm sure most of us even have a TV in our homes. But the question is, is TV dying? Well, not dying per se, but the explosion of social media and user-generated content seems to be moving away from TV to more portable gadgets. I mean, when was the last time you watched the series on TV? Yo, dude, it's been so long. I literally just stream online now. But let's take a minute to take a look at the stats. <laughs> Wow, there's so much out there that most of us don't even consider when it comes to social media. Mm. I mean, the first thing I do when I wake up is check my phone, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Has TV just become background noise? Actually, with that said, social media has brought in a whole new genre of video. User-generated content has become a massive source of entertainment and even information. Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, there's just so many social media platforms where being yourself is actually entertainment enough. Well, I won't deny that. I mean, Rose Confessions is certainly entertaining. Let's take a look at this. Lastly, gentlemen, we've, we've discussed the budget and we were losing advertisers. Face. Are you listening to me? No, no, I got you. I just, I'm just trying to get onto this Facebook Live. But okay, now you can speak. Yeah. I I'm trying to capture this. Well, I'm, I'm just still trying to upload something on Snapchat. I'll be, I'll be done real quick. Facebook Live. You, so, oh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Donald Trump just posted a controversial tweet. Can you hear my CEO is going crazy over this Facebook advertising? I don't know what Donald Trump has been saying lately because he's always talking about the fake news reporting. <laughs> Man always has something controversial to say. We are losing advertisers and all you people. You are feeding our competitors. TV is not relevant anymore. Exactly the incompetence that I'm talking about. This was my boss. I have a check. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. So even though TV is trying to stay relevant with 3D TVs, for example, social media is still thriving. To dive a bit deeper, we have Rhodes University digital digital media lecturer with us today, Kyla Rubin. Welcome, Kyla. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Um, So how popular do you think social media has actually become? Oh, well, I think that uh, social media in general, if you look at all the platforms from Facebook to Twitter to YouTube, it's totally taken over the internet. Uh, I mean, the figures keep growing and growing. I don't know any figures off the top of my head, but every year more and more thousands and millions of people are online uploading, downloading. Um, I mean, every every hour it's something like 17 years of footage gets uploaded to <laughs> to uh, YouTube alone yeah yeah um, so social media is content video content created by the people for the people um, with social media upcoming and very relevant um, how do you think it affects television in the way that it's produced and consumed okay so I, I think that Online, video is becoming more and more important and, uh, and it's becoming a bigger and bigger share of what kind of stuff people are downloading and, downloading and uploading 
on the internet. Um, and so we're seeing like the rise of online videos. So uh, a lot of it, so we see different types of formats and genres coming out like your short um, quick uh, bursts for news for example, or um, these scrumptious looking recipe videos taken from the top, or um, kind of news brought to you but maybe without the narration, maybe the narration's on the screen because people might be watching it on Facebook at work and they, and they so, so maybe audio becomes less important. Um, we get long videos, short videos, um, and then you also have GIFs, for example, yeah. that are taking over a little bit of what video used to do, I guess. So I think just widening up all of the, the kind of the opportunities for video and like what we used to watch on TV. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned audio. Do you, do you think that audio is also getting less uh, ratings or attention in comparison to visual, mm. more visual? Yeah, the research that uh, I've, I've, I've looked at of what kind of stuff grabs people's attention, it's definitely visuals. So photos, videos, uh, infographics, things like that. There's not a huge space for audio in, in our kind of mainstream social, me social media platforms. Like you can't voice note uh, your Facebook status update, for example. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, <clears throat> but then you have your dedicated like music and audio um, social media platforms like SoundCloud, for example, that their audio comes into its own and you can d discover uh, like new unknown artists or upload your podcasts. Mm -hmm. So not, not as important on our mainstream platforms, but they're getting their own attention and their own platforms as well. Mm. Um, so with regards to social media being the trend right now, um, what do you think this means for the future of television? Hmm. Um, I think that people are going to want much more like interactivity and control over what they watch. So we're already seeing it with like kind of Netflix and packages like that of where people can choose what they want to watch, when they want to watch it. So I think TV definitely needs to and is already responding to that to a large extent. I see. Thank you, Kyla, um, for your time. But don't leave us just yet because <laughs> we're about to take a look at one aspect of social media that is taking over the world memes. Wow, memes are not just humorous entertainment. Kyla, how popular have memes become as a source of news information? Well, memes are by definition wildly popular. They, they, they're kind of jokes and formats that go viral. Um, but I think they are getting a little bit of a place in news and, and sharing information. But um, I think that especially in the format that we know them, so a picture with some text with it, um, it doesn't quite lend itself to, to, to a lot of depth for news, but definitely in terms of commentary on the news and showing different perspectives of different issues, I think they're really cool and I like that they're it's so accessible to so many different people and they make ideas spread fast. Mm -hmm. I like memes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why do you think people prefer to consume uh, memes this way? Um, I think it's, it's quick and easy, firstly, so more accessible. Um, it can be much like simpler and plainer to understand some issues and stuff. But also maybe the feeling, well, obviously they're funny, yeah. but also the feeling of maybe being a part of something bigger or a continuing joke or, or getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so Kyla, we'd like to play a little game with you. Um, this game is called Caption the Meme. 
um, every year you challenge your first years to take memes out of everyday images um, now please can you caption these popular memes um, okay um let's see okay so i'm a i'm gonna be a corny lecturer i'm yeah. not i'm very happy i'm not a first year student being forced to make memes because i yeah. wouldn't know what i would want to say but this um i love this meme i think i would say uh when students don't understand what's going on in the course but they never come to lectures <laughs> <laughs> okay um i was one of those students <laughs> but here's the next one okay um so me, put the lecture slides on Aria Connected. Be a nice lecturer. Also me, no, let them suffer. <laughs> Why do you guys do that to us now? <laughs> You'll put us through the most. Um, hmm. If you never sign up to Aria Connected, you can't do your assignments anyway. <laughs> I told okay. you I'm a corny lecturer. <laughs> okay, the last one. <laughs> Okay, this one's one I've never actually seen before, but that looks like me, like, the moment that the 1st of December rolls up. <laughs> okay. I'm dressed like that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, um, thank you, Kyla, for joining us today. Um, one of the biggest sources of user-generated content has to be YouTube. It's so popular, it's becoming a whole genre on its own. You can find anything on YouTube these days, even video essays. Um, whatever that is. With the rise of user-generated content and the emergence of open online platforms such as YouTube, a new form of academic argument has gained popularity. It uses video, audio, and text unlike the traditional academic essay which is restricted to just text. The term video essay was first coined in 2010 on an online journal. YouTube essayists such as Nerdwriter1, Captain Christian, and Tony Zhao of Every Frame of Painting popularized the medium by analyzing film in a way regular essays could not. Again and again throughout the film, this heavy emphasis on double and triple framing in single shot. The animated series was airing at a time where the films were becoming progressively more and more cartoony and over the top, while ironically the cartoon took a grounded, more serious approach to the material. Video essays are shorter, more entertaining, and can refer back to the original source material. Video essays don't only explore film, but philosophy, psychology, popular culture, and science. And with the current trajectory of online spaces, it looks like the video essay might be the future of academic writing. Video essays, who knew? I have probably been watching them this entire time and didn't even know that they were called that. So, now we move on to more serious things. I have got the lovely Jane VG in studio with us. She is the TV3 lecturer at Rose University. My lecturer, actually. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Hello. Denise. Thank How are you, you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm all right. So, Jane has, like, hella experience in the industry, so pay attention, pay attention. All right, Jane, what I'd like to know from you is now that we're making the shift from traditional television and there's all this talk about YouTube and social media, are there still jobs out there for people like me who are aspiring TV journalists? I think there are, definitely, Lumiz. Um, you know, I, I know for a fact that, that companies are still hiring. And can I tell you something? Yeah. The, the fact that you guys are young is actually a huge advantage because you're going to be going into newsrooms or production companies where, or specifically newsrooms, I mean, that's my background, mm -hmm. um, where you, you understand the technology, you've grown up with the technology. So a lot of the older journalists um, aren't necessarily that tech savvy. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to come in with an advantage, plus you're going to charge, you're going to cost less. Yes. So yes, of course there are retrenchments going on and we know that, that a lot of um, broadcasting companies have been, have been cutting back. Um, retrenchments do happen and they tend to happen in cycles um, and we are in a recession, but at the same time, um, they're not going to stop hiring young people. So, and there always there are a number of there are a number of things that they look for. Um, and it doesn't mean that everybody's always going to get a job or that you're assured of a job, um, but perhaps we can chat a little bit about that uh, later on. Okay, so you mentioned something along the lines of, um, you know, we know about new technology and all that kind of stuff. Because mm. we are a new generation, does that mean that we need to specialize in more than one? ability in order to get a good job or is now me studying tv journalism good enough for the industry i think that um, uh, a degree in television journalism is exceptionally useful mm -hmm. um, 
you are going to, uh, the, the fact that you are already learning how to shoot and edit and produce your pieces and publish means that you can take your skills, you can, you can publish on YouTube, you can publish in traditional um, television form. So you're already coming in with those different kinds of skills. But if you're asking what is it that will make us hireable, um, what gives us certain advantages, then it comes down to you know, a question of how passionate are you? Have you done your research in the company um, that you're interested in working at? And I'm talking about production companies, I'm talking about broadcast companies. Um, you know, they, in an interview situation, you're going to be asked, so what do you think about certain programs? Or how can you improve on certain programs? And the people interviewing you will be looking for your opinion. Yes, yes. Um, which means that you you do need to, you need to take it upon yourself to, to to be as diverse as, as possible, possible within ourselves. And yeah. what I mean by that is that you you already have the tech, some most of the technical skills. But something like writing, television journalists previously don't, you know, historically don't necessarily know how to write. Yeah. It's hugely important. Okay, well, you've mentioned writing mm. and all that kind of stuff, so I'm just going to divert a little bit to the West. That's the, the connection was actually kind of weird, but I want to divert a little bit to the West. They have better and faster internet, right? Mm. Can we keep up with this new demand for internet happening now in South Africa? Um, you know, okay, so traditional audiences um, are declining in, in, the, in, in the US and in the UK, and bigger budgets being spent on digital media. Mm. But there they do have faster internet. So we, while we are seeing a lot of fragmentation of video and television, here in South Africa, if you look at the number of channels that have exploded across some of the pay TV uh, platforms, um, there's certainly a lot of fragmentation going on, and you know, uh, new channels are launched all the time, yeah. which does sometimes mean that um, what, it can mean a, a, a reduction in audiences and viewership because people are being viewers are being a lot more selective about what they're watching, and it can also mean because they're exposed, especially the younger generation. They're exposed to um, to video content. They're watching um, videos, shorter videos on, on Facebook, YouTube, other social media platforms. They are used to highly entertaining content that's that's of a shorter duration. And yes. I think attention spans are a lot shorter as well. I've seen you guys in class. <laughs> Who with and the cell phones? Yes, you know, watching the cell phones. Are you yes. are you watching are you watching two minute videos on 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 your cell phones, or are you actually you know checking your emails? And yes, yes jerks aside, um, that fragmentation does mean that um, you know audiences and viewers are expecting television of a, of a very high quality because they're being very selective about what they're watching. But at the same time, internet speeds, we don't have the same penetration at all and internet is the internet here is just not as fast. So the future of television is still in television here in South Africa. Yeah. We, I, think, I think we will see um, we will see the move into into online, you know, into the online space. Yeah. But the majority of South Africa's population are not using um, the internet for, for for video downloads or for video streaming because the internet is too slow and it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. So, I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Will the internet improve? I'm actually not sure. We'll just have to wait to see in future. But it really comes down to, can we make money?
So just to build up on our last point before we play the package, I'd like to know from you, Jane, how can I make money in the industry if I don't or can't get a permanent job? So it means I think it's 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 quite a, a complicated answer a question to to answer because there there are very many ways that you can actually make money, but it is it is hard. Um, it can be very challenging. So, for example, if um, you are a freelancer and you've been working at a production company, you might work for a couple of months on a particular project, and then that you know then then that lapses, and then what do you do? Um, in, in that scenario, often what works is for you to come up with a programming concept of your own, to do the research, and then you can approach another broadcaster, potentially, mm -hmm. that's often what happens, or you can approach a production company um, with your and go and pitch to them um, with your idea for so making almost, the television. So almost like if you were starting your own business kind of thing. Yeah, okay. well you could do it as you could do it as a, as a freelancer as well, so as, as somebody who's operating under their own steam. You can take the idea to a broadcaster. What often tends to happen, unfortunately, is that broadcasters have in-house production teams. So they'll be making their own content. In that case, they might reject your idea, but um, it's always worth making contacts. Um, you, if you put forward, if you, first of all, if you research a great idea and you script it very nicely, um, you present yourself and you make content, you ask questions, you become known to the people at the, at the broadcaster, that's, that's as good as having an interview, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, because it's a great way of getting yourself out there and, and making contact. Jane, okay, so just to sum it up, I'd like to know from you, what advice do you have for students that are trying to break into the industry? Well, perhaps just following on from what I was saying previously about if you take an idea to a broadcaster and it's a great and it's a program and you want to convince them that they should hire you to produce this program, um, a, um, a, a, you'll, you'll only be able to put yourself in a favorable position if you bring on board a sponsor, which means that you need to be open. You need to do your market research first. You need to understand who your viewers are. You need to understand who your um, potential, who the potential sponsors or advertisers might be. Get in there, bring them to the broadcaster, but make sure that you in a position to, you're locked in with them as well. So if you're going to be producing the program, you're bringing a sponsor in and you will make yourself infinitely more hireable because then there is a certain money there. Other tips and advice, be passionate, show initiative, develop a personal brand and have yourself develop your personal, your, your social media um, uh, profile which means having a showreel, write a blog, make position yourself um, as somebody who specializes in television and um, be clear about what your interests specifically are. Well, I know I'll definitely be using those tips. If anyone wants to sponsor me, I'm here. Jane, thank you so much for being here. You've been an absolute pleasure. All right, so just to get another perspective, we are now joined on Skype by Dumisa Lenguati, a Rhodes graduate. Hello, Dumisa, hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so Demisa, you graduated from Rhodes in 2014. Where are you working at the moment and what exactly do you do? Okay, so I currently work as a segment producer at Expresso Morning Show on SCBC3. We play on SCBC3, but we commissioned by them. So I work for a private production company called Cardova, which um, if some of you will know, it's uh, owned by the same person who owns Dulubili that does Top Billing and Basala and all those exciting shows. So um, yeah, what I do is essentially produce content from uh, inception, so creation, to making sure that it's ready to air. So that will usually be in the form of a live interview where I need to get the guest information and, and gather enough um, visual material to support the live interview visuals. And also there's um, inserts that we do. So I write a full shoot brief, send a crew out. Um, they do what I hopefully told them to do and then they bring it back. Um, we work with the editor and my show producer to make a slick, uh, usually three and a half to four minutes um, insert that'll be played out during the live show on SBC3. Wow, that's awesome, man. And I want to know from you, like, how difficult was it for you to find a job straight out of university? 
I would say pretty easy. Um, if there's any sort of advice that I could give to, as a third year, if you're um, looking or optioning leaving university after your undergrad, or if you're thinking of doing fourth year television journey, start looking for jobs now. September is the time. Uh, people are putting nets out for um, hiring new blood in January, and um, they really love uh, fresh graduates because they're a little cheap, but also it's a great way for you to, to just get in the field and get your experience. And the, the further you go and the more experience you get, the easier it becomes to get a job. So in my case, um, I handed in my last uh, Journe 4 uh, personal assignment. And a week later, I had a job as a videographer editor at an in-store marketing company. And that was really so I could just get my foot into Cape Town. Um, I felt kind of restless about six months into that and for another eight months I was looking for the job that I currently have now. So I saw it on Biz Community, I applied and then I got it. <laughs> okay, now with social media, online streaming and user-generated content on the rise, we see that the way video is being consumed is changing, but what impact do you think will that have on traditional forms of television in future? It's, it's always funny because in Varsity we were talking about print media and we think uh, is there always going to be a place for print media and I think it really just depends on the sphere in which you, you operate. So the same argument or the same um, wondering about the, the longevity of television in South Africa, it's going through the same process as print media went through a, few, a couple of years ago. Um, I think there'll always be a place in um, certain locales where they can only get the public broadcaster. The viewership there is huge. You can see with um, soapies like Isbaya and Scheme Sum and Generation, so they'll always have a strong viewership because there's always going to be um, those people that only have access to that. Um, in the mediated, more westernized sphere, I suppose, um, that's where we're seeing a lot of innovation. We're realizing that um, we want to create more niche television for the people that will access that niche television. That's not always for everyone. And so things like... Um, generating your own YouTube content. You have to get a sponsor on if you really want to make a living out of it. And there's so many, there really are so many ways to do it. If you just get out there and start it, you don't have to wait for anyone. You can do it yourself. Mm. That's the exciting thing about it. Um, but what I, the model I'm really, really excited about mm. in terms of um, great um, serialized television mm. is um, Showmax. They're basically um, copying Netflix and creating their own original content and so I think it's a great platform for a, a young television director, producer, writer um, if they really want to get their special content out there to just like approach, approach Showmax, give them a really really banging proposal and see what you can do. That's great advice, I really do appreciate it. But how are we changing the way TV is produced in order to adapt it to the online world? Well, yes, I, I can definitely see it in the in the format. Um, the audience these days is, wants to watch a lot, but their attention span is also really short. So um, if you ask uh, any one person at any time how many series they're watching, they're probably watching about 10, and they're, they're binge watching so they can get their fix in. And I think that's the way that the, the, the material that we have is adapting to the audience that we have. So you're seeing a lot of um, YouTube uh, channels that'll have 10 episodes of um, five minute episodes, uh, sorry, five minute episodes each. And yeah, that's that's the way it's going. We want we want bite-sized things, but we want lots of it. And um, the internet with its vast amount of space is really allowing for, for um, content producers to be able to do that. Cool, do you think traditional forms of TV can keep up with the user-generated content and streaming in future? I think we, I don't want to say there is a split um, currently happening, but uh, I think content is being generated uh, in a user-generated uh, web-friendly manner or um, accessible manner for download for those people that have access to it. And it's really unfortunate that um, the internet infrastructure in our country doesn't allow for everyone to be able to have that access. Um, so I think, yes, there will still, as long as there's always uh, SABC TV with an aerial, <laughs> you're always going to get those people that after dinner will sit down and they'll watch the news and they'll watch Generations. There's always going to be that market. I think um, South Africa is missing out so much, though, on being able to provide internet for everyone. Like the other day I heard about this... Um, this invention that is a solar powered 
Wi-Fi router. And it's, it's really, it's that simple. If you could get everyone to get something like that, um, we could create, we could go crazy with the amount of content creation and creativity that we could get out there. Wow, Demisa, thank you so much for joining us. All the way from Johannesburg, just so that everyone knows, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much and all the best, eh? Good luck. Guys, that's all we have time for. From the Versatile team, we'll catch you later. Bye! Bye.